Welcome to How To with Mr. Noodle. On today's episode, we're going to talk about how to repair a pocket door that has come off the track. We won't know exactly what's wrong with it until we get it out of the pocket. We'll explain all that. Some of the tools you may need for the job are right here. A pry bar, a really flat, thin one so that you can get the trim off without damaging it. Um, a spatula type blade like this would work really well as well. A cutting knife, a wrench to undo the bolts on the track. A finish hammer. You're going to need a caulking gun and some caulk to fill in the uh, cut marks that you make on the trim, some finish nails, and if you don't want to use finish nails, you can always use a pin nail. All right, so let's get started. All right, now the first step we're going to do here is we're going to cut along the edge of the trim around the pocket door with a razor knife. The reason we're going to cut that is so that when we peel this trim off, we don't tear the paint and make it look really ugly. When we put it back on, we'll just use caulking to fill in that cut line. All right, here we go. Be careful when you're pulling that knife across that you don't slip and go outside and score the trim itself. Try to keep it right up in the crack there. You may, may have to take several passes on this to make sure you get a good cut. And don't worry about it if you mess it up a little bit because the cock will fill that in just fine. Also gonna wanna go right here. And right here. All right, now take your uh, blade here and just kind of hammer that in that mark. And that'll separate the trim up there. Now you want to take your pry bar and get that up under there. And gently pry that so that you don't break the uh, molding. The idea is to preserve it so that you can put it back on. That way you don't have to buy new molding. Now that we've taken off the horizontal piece, and the whole purpose behind this, by the way, is so that we can get this pocket door removed from the pocket, we're going to take off the vertical piece. So we're going to go ahead and score this uh, like we did on the top. Same process, we're going to take the uh, spatula here and get that in there. Try to pry this away. Nice and easy so we don't break the molding. All right, very good, we got that out. Now the next step will be removing the pocket door. All right, for this next step, we're gonna to try to remove the pocket door from the wall. We have to completely close the door, and once we get it closed, this edge will be exposed, uh, on the back edge of the door will be exposed here so that we can swing the door into the kitchen and then uh, remove it from the track. You are going to need help with this part because it is uh, broken up here. We, we need a, another person on the other side to help me get the door completely square with the frame here so that we can slide it in. All right, here we go. I just noticed one thing, if you, can, you want to bring the camera down right here, this door has a little stopper right here. Can you see that? So we're going to have to take that out. So once we get this edge exposed, the door will swing in. So 
I'm going to take care of that step right now. it wraps around the door completely so we're gonna to have to remove it from the other side all right on the back side of the door is also one of these little guides the guide that we were looking at on the other side wraps under the door frame and it's secured behind this piece of molding this piece of molding goes pretty deep into the floor and it has a another piece of wood backing up against it I am gonna take this piece of molding out but I'd really have a difficult time getting it out of this part of the door. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a back saw and just flush cut this and we can fill that in with uh, caulking later on. All right, so as I mentioned, we're going to back saw the base of this molding here and then we're going to remove that piece of molding. Let's get started. through that's it next step we're gonna take and cut the uh, paint along the edge of the molding much like we did on the other side of the door normally you wouldn't have to take off both sides of molding to get the door out but because this door has that guide down at the base we're gonna have to do that an added step and keep in mind your door may not be exactly like this door there's so many variations out there so you may not have to take all these steps that we're taking here today If you don't make the line straight, don't worry about it. All that'll be filled in with caulking. We gotta take away that guide on this side. far down in the floor we're gonna have to figure out how to get that out of there let me get this piece of molding out of here let's see here there we go all right we got it out now we'll work on getting the door out of the pocket all right now that we got the molding off on the other side we got the guide off down at the bottom we have the moldings off on this side have your uh, co-worker on the other side help you square the door up and push it through. All right, go ahead and push, Steve. There you go. Thank you. And then lift up on the door and push opposite where the wheels are on the track, and the door should come right out. All right, now that we got the door out, we had to figure out what happened with the hardware. As it turns out, this hardware is perfectly fine. What happened is the screws just pulled out of the wood from years of use. So what I'm going to do is I did fill in these screws uh, off camera uh, with some wood and some glue. And I'm just going to slide this carriage up a ways away from the old screw holes. I'm going to counter drill some new screw holes with a drill bit of the appropriate size. And then I'm going to screw the hardware back to the door. So let's get started. Now the reason we uh, drill a little bit first with a drill bit that's slightly smaller than the screw is to prevent the screw from causing the wood to split. All right, a couple of holes there. 
get the hardware loosely in place. I'm going to bring the screws down. loosen this hardware up in order to get my drill bit down to a point where I can get on that screw head. As it turns out, I didn't have to loosen up the hardware. I could get it in there a bit of an angle. Just make sure it's snug. There we go. And the door hardware is back in place. Now we have to do is mount the door. All right, after you get the door up into the general area, at this point you don't need a helper for this part. You're gonna tip the door in at an angle, get the wheels on the track, and then swing the door in. So here we go. All right, after a bit of a struggle, we were able to get the wheels to, to get on the track, and now we can slide the door into the pocket. Now that the door's in the pocket, we gotta put everything back together. So we'll start with the uh, guide that goes down at the bottom. Uh, now I've got the hardware, the guide, that we're gonna put on the bottom of the door. It's important to put this back to keep the door from rubbing on the wood frame and causing marks on the door. So let's get started. Slide that back down in there. And that'll center the door uh, in the channel. Since I didn't have uh, nails this size, I went ahead and reused the old nails, so. All right, on to the next step. All right, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, we're gonna put the trim back on. There's a couple of options you have. You can use finished nails that I have right here with a finishing hammer. Finishing hammer has a smooth head on it so that you don't make impressions in the wood. Or if you happen to have a pin nailer, you can use a pin nailer, and that's what I'm gonna use. That'll speed up the process. So let's get started. All right, here we go. said about this kind of looks ugly we're going to take care of that our door in the pocket and we verified that it works mechanically we're going to want to come up here and fill in all of the stuff that we cut and the nail holes that are there and all this stuff here along here so how we do that is we use caulking you want to use painters caulk the reason you want to use painters caulk instead of like kitchen caulk is because kitchen caulk gathers dust so go ahead and put a bead of caulk up here And then we'll come back and we'll use our finger to smooth it all out. And 
it's really that simple. Now you see we filled that in, that looks really nice now. And if you really want to be lazy, you don't have to paint it. Um, so we'll go ahead and continue that process and get all the nail holes filled in and the rest of the cracks filled in and we'll complete the project. All right, now that we've caulked in all the uh, nail holes and all the score marks from the uh, razor knife, uh, we're good to go. Uh, if you have any questions about how I did this, uh, again, every door is gonna be different. You may not, your door may not be the same, so your application of how to go about pulling the, the door out of the pocket might be completely different. But for this particular style of door, um, if you have any questions, feel free to message me. Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, please subscribe. Are you close enough that you can count my nose hairs? It's really that easy. <laughs>